Hello everyone, my name is Incoherence, and for those of you that are not aware, um, I've been talking about this on, on Twitter and Facebook over the past couple of days, so I don't know, maybe you should check me out on there. But anyway, um, I've been invited into a Total War YouTuber tournament hosted by Mr. Smart Donkey as well as officially Devin. There are 16 Total War YouTubers in this tournament, and we are competing for absolutely nothing. There is no prize, there is no... Uh, I guess we're just playing for bragging rights and for fun, mostly. Anyway, uh, the links to everyone is below. That is the hosts as well as the players. You should check every single one of them out. Please, please do. So I just kind of want to go over the rule set very quickly and then we'll get into the meat of the episode. Uh, we'll talk about army compositions and then we'll get into the match. Now, as for the rules, first and foremost, the most important rule, I would say, is that at the start of the tournament we were all given a random faction to play and represent throughout the entire tournament. So, I've been given the Danes, I will be playing as the Danes every single round. Uh, so, basically, we, we just want to see more variety in this tournament. We've also removed some really powerful all-around factions just to reinforce the variety because, I don't know, it's we, we would probably see certain factions overrepresented otherwise. So that's why that change was made. Um, as far as the matches themselves, the funds are large, 10,000 talents. There are no rules as to what units you can bring, and there are no rules as to what map you should play on. So really, the map choice is up to the players themselves. Again, just for more variety. This is a very casual tournament, I would say. Uh, so moving on, in my first match, I was matched up against Prince Dragonheart, myself playing as the Danes, and he is playing as the Alamans. Now I just very quickly want to go over my army build and then we will go over his and get into the match itself. So over the past couple of days I've been tweaking this build, I've been playing online matches, I've been checking out Total War channels trying to find what works, what doesn't work, and this is what I came up with. Um, so for my general unit I've got a Nordic Raid Leader, a that's an infantry unit with a double-handed axe you can see here. I've got two units of Nordic Spearmen, two units of Nordic Warriors, uh, five units of Axe Warriors, four units of Hurlers, and then finally, and most importantly, six units of Horse Raiders. If I was to say anything about this army, I would say that it is a light, maneuverable army. 75% um, of these units are light or very light. For example, my Axe Warriors are light infantry, my Hurlers obviously have no armor, and my uh, Horse Raiders are light cavalry. I have very few heavy units. I would think that uh, my Nordic Warriors and my Nordic Spearmen are the heaviest units in the army. So um, probably very susceptible to missile. I find that these units are very cost effective as well, so that has left me with quite a bit of talents to spend on experience upgrades. So I've just dumped experience on the key units in my army. So my Horse Raiders have a single Silver Chevron, my General has a single Silver Chevron, and my all my melee infantry has three Bronze Chevrons. So that should cause them to, you know, kick the ever-loving shit out of any inferior units. I think, like, with my unit experience upgrades, my Horse Raiders melee attack is somewhere near 50. Something like that. Uh, so... They should be nigh unbreakable unless they get the absolute shit kicked out of them. I don't know. But anyway, that is my build. If you have any comments about that, be sure to leave them down below. Now, moving on to Dragonheart's build. He has uh, Knodmar's entourage as his general. He has four units of elite Lamnic scavengers. He's got two units of bejeweled nobles, two units of Germanic warband, three units of Germanic crossbowmen, and then finally three units of noble Germanic horsemen. So... In a matchup against my army, we can immediately see that Dragonheart has brought many more elite units, which he has dumped experience points into. So he's got fewer units that are more elite. I can't really speak to the strengths or weaknesses of a few of these Alamin units, and I don't want to criticize Dragonheart's choices right now because, I don't know, I can't say I know enough about these units to make informed decisions, so I'd rather not embarrass myself. And we can also see immediately that Dragonheart has a lot less men than me, a lot fewer units. 
he has 2,080 men, whereas I have 2,700 men. So that's a 700 man difference, essentially. And that could play a critical role in this battle. But anyway, moving on. So first things first, our map is Cobblestone. Which is a very open plains map. Uh, no terrain, really, to take advantage of. Now, looking at our deployments here, we can see that I have gone for a much wider deployment. Um, I find in competitive play that you really need to use those spaghetti lines. As unfortunate as it is, just gives such a huge edge. Um, I know I said I wouldn't comment on Dragonheart's uh, unit choices, but I can say very confidently that I think he has brought too many spears for this engagement. Uh, the Danes are very good in melee, so he's brought... I would say too many spears for this. Um, I think the crossbows are going to be ineffective against my army. Crossbows are made to punch through armor. I have very few armored units, so those are going to be difficult to utilize. Now, as for my formation, I've got two of my Nordic horse raiders on either flank supported by some axe warriors. I've got my slingers in the center in a wide, uh, what do you call this, loose formation, and they are supported by my spears and my Nordic warriors. And then again, I've got basically a carbon copy of my flanks as reserve in my center. As for Dragonheart himself, he has put his three units of crossbows behind his spears, and then he's got this kind of oblique formation with his axes, his Germanic warband, and his bejeweled nobles on the right flank, all four of his cavalry units. That is his Germanic horsemen as well as his general unit. They are on the right flank as well. Uh, possibly too little cavalry as well. In my army, I've got six units of cav. Um, and he only has four. So already he is in a tough spot when it comes to cavalry. So as for his opening move, he has decided to basically just stream right at my lines with his cav. All four of his units are just charging straight into my... Uh, horse raiders. So then in response what I've done is I have moved some of my slingers over because as we all know they slow cavalry charges so they would be quite useful there. I've also taken my front and uh, sorry my center reserves over to reinforce. On the right flank I have moved my horsemen far afield for a flanking maneuver because obviously Dragonheart does not have any cav on the left flank. And uh, I began to move my infantry to deal with his left flank because, as we can see, uh, it's all spears. So I know that my melee infantry will do very well there. Now, as for the uh, cavalry engagement on the right flank, I charged in there. And I guess I threw some precursors, but it was very ineffective. A couple kills. And now my slingers are uh, beginning to fire a few shots here, slowing these uh, these guys. And unfortunately, I've taken a few casualties from Precursors myself. But then, in come my Axe Warriors. They have Precursors, and now it's time for them to use them. We're going to get uh, one volley off from these guys here, I think. Any minute now. There it is. Boom! We get a volley of Precursors from both units of Axe Warriors. And the results are devastating. We can see here, uh, Alamans are dying left, right, and center. It's brutal, but then I follow it up with a charge that is just beautiful in my opinion. It, it goes quite well. The slingers are slowing this cavalry. My horses are light cavalry and they're able to catch that heavy Alanan, uh, Alemannic cavalry. Unfortunately, I do not want to overcommit and uh, get bogged down by these swords, so I decide to retreat. And that has caused roughly 20 casualties in my units here. Um, actually, it's more, it's more like 30 casualties between the two horse units. And that is um, not a great trade because Dragonheart has lost, uh, I would say, 15... Yeah, he only lost 45 horsemen there. So it wasn't exactly a good trade. Now, having uh, dealt with or sufficiently put pressure on his left flank, I move my infantry back to the center. Sorry, I keep pausing. I just want to get these cinematic shots. I move my infantry to the center, his axes actually engage my slingers, which is just fine because my slingers are absolute trash, <laughs> I don't need them really at this point. Uh, he did charge a single unit of Germanic horse into my combined axe and horse uh, blob, so that was probably a terrible trade, that unit is decimated. 
with the precursors there. Uh, let's take a look at the right flank very briefly. Um, so his spears have decided to charge, and then I counter with some Nordic warriors and just completely encircle his units. Um, on the extreme right flank, a unit of his crossbows has moved out to counter my cav, which is an odd choice because we know this unit is going to get flattened, do we not? Um, a quick overview of the battlefield shows that Dragonheart's army is very much split. We can see a concentration on the, uh, I guess this would be like the northern flank? No, I don't know what this is. But uh, what I want to try to emphasize is that his army has been split, and now I'm driving a wedge in the middle with my uh, swords and whatnot. And there's no way he's going to be able to combine the two halves um, unless he plays extremely well. So I'm doing a counter cav charge on the left here. I've got axes and supporting units. I'm now beginning to encircle his infantry with my axes. Those slingers prove to be good fodder and they have bogged down his melee units so that I can just totally encircle them with my own. Uh, my slingers here are focusing fire on his lightly armored crossbows and they basically just whittle those units down, and now I'm beginning to engage on the right flank as well, charging those axes in. As far as these crossbows, I guess I forgot to uh, issue a proper uh, charge here because my cavalry is just being picked off by those crossbows, and uh, we're doing quite well. I've destroyed a lot of his cavalry on the left flank here, and his units are beginning to rout. His general is running away. I've got a lot of supporting infantry on the left, lefternmost, uh, fight, I suppose. There we go, got some precursors off, and now these axes will charge in for the kill. And uh, it's a slaughter. His units are being entirely surrounded. Uh, it's a little bit of a different story on the right flank, where my units are... Looks like my slingers are fleeing. I lost a unit of Nordic warriors, but these are all spears, so they will not last in prolonged melee combat. Their melee defense is quite high, but not high enough. And now my cavalry basically is unchallenged at this point, so they are able to run rampant throughout the entire battlefield. I wiped his cavalry out uh, without losing too many of my own men. Now there's a single unit of bejeweled nobles fighting very valiant valiantly here, I have to say. Um, they're completely surrounded, but they're doing their damnedest to survive the onslaught here. Look at them go. Oh! And then I think he's issued a charge towards my Axemen, but as we can see, that has gone horribly wrong. There's a few beheadings there. Quite unceremonious, I have to say. Um, that is a bit cruel to just behead a man in the field. But there we go. That is a close victory um, with his cavalry being completely destroyed, his infantry being destroyed as well. As for the losses, I lost 1,000 men. He lost 1,600 men. Most of my losses were in my slingers. I lost a unit of Nordic warriors, damaged unit of spearmen, and then I took a lot of damage in two units of axe warriors and two units of horse raiders. So I think it was a good battle. Things went quite well. Um, perhaps Dragonheart had too few units. He wasn't able to meet my combat whips, so I was able to encircle him. Um, I don't want to say easily, but it was it was quite easy because I had a lot more units than he did. So anyway, Prince Dragonheart, thank you for fighting the battle. It was quite fun. And uh, I will be moving on to the second round of the tournament to face either Total War Zone or Malekith Skadi. I don't know yet because they have not fought that battle. But anyway, everyone, I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if uh, the camera movement is too erratic <laughs> or not. I don't really know how you guys want uh, this to be showcased? Do you want me to focus on certain combats rather than others? I don't know. Anyway, if you have any thoughts, any comments, leave a like, leave a comment below. If you want to see more of this stuff, be sure to subscribe. I will be fighting a couple more rounds in the tournament, I hope. I don't know. Anyway, everyone, my name is Incoherence. This is the YouTuber Total War Tournament, and I will see you guys next time.